Hey guys, welcome to another collection video. Uh, a few weeks ago we looked at A Link to the Past, the two versions, uh, or at least the English American versions. There was the regular version and then the million seller player's choice version. Uh, today we are going to look at sort of its predecessor in a sense. It's the same game, but uh, the Super Famicom version. Uh, right off the bat you'll notice that uh, the boxes were actually slightly different in that, uh, not so much the designs, but the actual sizes. As you can see, this one is not as, I guess, long, but it's wider, or lengthen with our interchangeable. Uh, this is actually the same size of a classic VHS tape box. So, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a cost thing, since they probably were already manufacturing them in this size. They just made the video game ones like this as well. So anyway, as you can see, the box covers are uh, drastically different. As opposed to the American versions that just had the the logos, uh, this actually had uh, the Master Sword here. We have Link, Super Famicom, and, and on the back we actually have some artwork of Link and Zelda, and a screenshot. As opposed to just well, just a couple screenshots on the American version. I think the Japanese uh, got the better end of the stick here because they got some artwork and it's pretty cool. So uh, let's open this baby up and see what's inside. So right away we got, before looking at the manual, let's look at actually the cartridge. Uh, for those of you that have never seen a Super Famicom game, uh, it's not too far off from a Super Nintendo game. In fact, I've got Link to the Past right here. So these are the two versions. They're virtually the same size. In fact, almost the same size. The Super Famicom version from the top almost looks more like a Nintendo 64 cartridge. A little wider, I guess. Uh, but it's almost the same size as a Super Nintendo cartridge. It's more roundish on the edge instead of more like a is more like a box or like a rectangle. Uh, so yeah, the cartridge right there, it has the Triforce and the Master Sword. And uh, uh, looking at the manual, the manual for the Super, Cam Super Famicom version is actually almost identical to the American one. It uh, has a lot of the same goodies uh, in terms of the storyline and the maps and the pictures. Uh, in fact, it has, I think, all of the same artwork from the story. So here's the pretty elaborate uh, backstory of A Link to the Past that even today a lot of theorists like reference in, in connecting it with... Uh, like Ocarina of Time and some of the games that take place before A Link to the Past in the Zelda timeline. Uh, so this is like the Seal War, the Imprisoning War. Um, and so it's got some nice artwork, Link, Zelda, and some, like I said, a pretty elaborate story. And uh, much like the American version of the manual, uh, it's actually pretty good. They, they've got a mixture of you know, showing you what all the buttons do. That's what even what manuals do uh, today. Uh, there's a good collection of artwork, and here's some of the characters. Sahastra la 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 la. I can never pronounce his name, so I just mock it a little bit. <laughs> uh, so there's some more artwork. Link carrying pots. Link swimming, of course. Uh, so it shows all the various, you know, forms of Link here, and then. Uh, What's cool about the, this manual is it has artwork for virtually every single item in the game. And this was the same for the Super Nintendo version too, but here's the flute or ocarina, and one of the canes, the magic cape, an empty bottle. And then later on in the guide, they've got the sword and the shield and your tunics, the power glove, the titan's mitt, and the flippers, the moon pearl, pegasus boots. Like, So they've got artwork for every single item and even some of the items like the not even really items but just like magic jars that you can pick up to fill your magic meter small and large uh, heart piece artwork and rupee artwork and even random bush artwork so uh, it's pretty cool I, I like that piece too it's like Link uh, seeing freeing one of the sages I guess from the crystals found in the dark world and uh, yeah and uh, towards the end of the artwork, uh, end of the guide, here we have uh, all the various items. But towards the end of the manual, 
uh, we get some more official artwork that's Link and Zelda presumably early on going through the Hyrule Castle sewers uh, there's Agnim right there and there's that's just a screenshot there's Link looking on to I believe the Tower of Hera uh, Link fighting a Jolim in the desert Link's uncle and then some of the various enemies. We got a Stalfos, the Ball and Chain Trooper, a Gibdo, we got a Helmosaur over here, a Wizardrobe. So it's a pretty cool manual and even a brief mention of the first two games. Pretty cool manual. Um, and that is the Super Famicom version. You can still find this. Um, it's not too rare and it's not too expensive either. Uh, It'll occasionally pop up on eBay here in the U.S., even the Japanese version. Uh, it'll usually sell for about 40 or 50 bucks, though, uh, in complete form with everything. Uh, even if you look at Yahoo Japan or something like that, when you when you factor in all the importing costs and everything, it's pretty much the same price, about that 40 to 50 dollars range. Uh, sometimes a little more, but uh, that's pretty much range, and they're not too rare. I mean, this was a high-selling game, so. Um, it's virtually never going to be too rare. So uh, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, and I will see you guys next week with another item in my collection. Take care, guys.